Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. Today we'll have our 87th lesson in our series of vocabulary words. Let's begin, shall we? Yesterday, yesterday on day number 86, we learned a whole bunch of numbers, a whole bunch of words rather, and all the words that we learned yesterday they all meant essentially the same thing. They all meant small amount, tiny amount, not enough, not adequate, not sufficient, tiny amount, minuscule amount. Do you understand? Today, the first three words that we're going to learn are the antonyms. These three words, the so first three words that we're going to learn, they all mean having large quantity of something, having a lot of something, having an abundance of something, large supply of something. Let's begin, shall we? 460 is the first word. 460 is the first word. And the first word we're going to learn today is copious. Co P us. Copious. Large quantity. Plentiful. large quantity plentiful abundance abundance would be the noun abundant is the adjective we're looking at adjective here copious is an adjective you might talk about having copious amount of information which means you have a lot of information copious amount of details, the police provided copious amount of details, they, they provided, uh, they gave us copious amount of resources. Uh, today is a beautiful day, we have copious sunshine, shun sunshine, nice sunny day, we have copious sh sunshine. Some parts of the world, they have very little sunshine, sun does not come out very often, but in their other parts, they get plenty of sunshine, copious amount of sunshine. Let's learn one more. Next one. The word is plethora. Plethora. Again it means the same thing. It means to have super abundance. To have super abundance of something. Plethora of something. Super abundance. And the reason I decided to write super abundance here, even though we already have abundant here, they all mean the same, they both mean the same thing, is because I did not know myself that super abundance actually is one word. Super abundance is not super abundance, it's super abundance is one word. It's not a typo on my part, it's not a mistake on my part. It means to have excess amount of something, to have plenty of something, we have plenty of something, to have large amount, there were plethora of topics for us to choose from, they, the teacher told us to write an essay from the list of topics. Well, how many how many topics were there on the list? Were there ten topics? Were there five topics? Oh no, there were plethora of topics. There were like two hundred to topics that we could have chosen from. There was no shortage of topics. There were plethora of topics. There are plethora of paintings. There are plethora of paintings in my city hall, in my town hall, in my school, in my university. There are there are plethora of toys. My little boy has plethora of toys. He has plenty of toys. There is no shortage of toys. There are toys everywhere in the house. Let's move on. The next word we're going to learn is prodigious. Pro. Dig. Dig. Us. Prodigious. Don't pronounce that as prodigious. It's not pro. Prodigious. Prodigious. Large amount. Large amounts. Something great in size and force. Something great in size and force. Now when we say size, when we say size, 
We are, talk, we are not talking about physical sense, not in the physical sense, not in the physical sense. It's not something that you can measure and touch and feel. Prodigious, large amount, large, large size, in the, in the, in the actual intellectual sense of the word, not in the physical sense of the word. Something that is enormous, something that is enormous. Again, not in the physical sense. For example, if somebody is very learned, if somebody is very if somebody is very learned, learned, not learned, learned. If somebody is very learned, you might say, Michael is very learned. He has prodigious amount of knowledge. He has prodigious amount of knowledge. He has prodigious amount of information. On this particular knowledge, uh, particular topic, if you're writing a paper, if you're writing a paper on the on the on the Second World War, why don't you talk to Michael? He has prodigious amount of knowledge on the topic. He is very learned fellow when it when it comes to history. When it comes to history, he knows his history. Learn it. I don't quite remember when we learned the word. Oh, it's right here on day number eighty-one. On day. Today is our day number 87. On day number 81, we learned this word. It's a very simple word, and yet we learned. And yet we learned it because we learned it. You see, learned. Yet, yet we learned it because this word has two different meanings depending on how it is being pronounced. Learned, as I just did it, because we learned it on 80 on day 81. That's the past tense of learn. Learn, learned. I have learned, or you can pronounce it as. Learn it. Learn it means scholarly, having a lot of knowledge, having a lot of a uh, lot of wisdom. Learn it, fellow. Do you understand? He has prodigious amount of he has prodigious amount of uh, knowledge. He has prodigious amount of knowledge because he's learned it. Because he's learned it. Let's go on. So that was it. That was the three words. Those were the three words that we want to learn today, having to do with large amount. And the, all of these three words will qualify as the antonyms of all the words that we learned yesterday. We are done with it. We can move on to something new. Okay? Let's carry on. Prodigious plethora copious. Next thing we want to learn is not a word. It's not a word. It's not a phrase. It's just a prefix, very simple prefix. You might wonder why we why we bother, but here it is, nonetheless. Counter. Counter as in counter as in a prefix. Not the counter. Counter has several different meanings. Counter could be a machine that counts money. It count. It is a counter. Banks have counters where they put the dollar dollar bills in there. It counts. It's called a counter. You may have a counter on you in your kitchen, in the kitchen, in the kitchen where you do your cuttings and so forth. There's a counter. You 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 stand there. It doesn't have to be kitchen. It's a counter where you stand there and do something. It's like a raised surface to work on. A counter. That's another meaning. Here we're not using the word counter as a word. Here we're not using this term as a word, a counter, but as a prefix. What does it mean when it appears as a prefix, as the beginning part of something, beginning part of a word? If you see this word, this, this term being used as a prefix, it just means contrary or opposite. It means opposite. Opposite or contrary. We're going to, we're going to go through a few examples of where the word appears as a prefix. Okay, I have a list of, list of few of them here. Let's, let's go through them. For example, how about counterclaim? Counter claim. If somebody makes a claim, if somebody says, well, uh, this, this, and this guy did this and this to me, he made a claim, well, the other party might turn around and make a counterclaim. Counterclaim. Same thing in the, in the courtroom, you may, somebody might sue you, if somebody might sue you, you might choose to counter sue. These are all one word, don't break them up, these are all one word. Do you understand? These are all one word. Counter sue. It's not counter and then suit. It's not counter and then claim. Counter claim. One word. How about 
counteract counter act somebody does something and to neutralize it you do something else so that's your act against their act you do something against their act against counter you see counter act counteract how about counter attack counter attack if somebody attacks you you attack them back counter counterbalance counter balance now the reason why I I go through the bother reason I the reason I I go through the bother of writing the prefix over and over again is to emphasize I could just write down these and just speak them but I don't want you to think that they are to be written as two words these are all one words counterbalance is one word counter charge counter charge can you think of any can you think of any how about counter check counter check I have checked these figures I have checked these figures could you could you could you counter check them could you uh, uh, make ch check the figures against my work make sure I did my work correctly counter check how about counterculture let's do put counterculture on the top what does counterculture mean counter culture counter culture Counterculture is a culture, especially of young people, with the values that run counter to those of the established norms. Let's write. Let's write all of that down. Okay. Counterculture means. Counterculture means a culture. Culture, especially of young people, especially of young people, because it is typically the youngs who want to rebel against the elderly, against the grown-up. They want to rebel because they want to assert their identity. And they have, by, they, they do so, they, 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 they rebel by doing something weird, something strange, something out of the ordinary, something that is not normally done. And those things that the youngsters do, they, they, it, it becomes, it forms a culture of their own and it is called a counterculture. A culture, especially of young people, with values, with values, that run, that run counter to, counter to, against, opposite to those, those of, my handwriting is horrible, those of the those of the established norms those of the established values, those of the established traditions, those of the established conventions, and finally, those of the established mores. Now, quite unfortunate, it is quite unfortunate that I left my index of the words in the other room. I cannot tell you where we learned the which day we learned about mores and, and conventions, but we have learned these words. Perhaps in the next video I will I will, I will I will make a point of not arranging these two words, and in the next video I'm going to tell you when we learned these two words. Convention just means tradition. Convention the word convention, the word convention has two meanings. One meaning of the word convention is is a meeting, a gathering, a powwow. You might say uh, I'm going to convention, I'm going to convention uh, next Friday. I'm going to New York for a convention for a gathering, for a meeting. The second meaning of the word convention is a tradition. Tradition is a noun. The adjective of convention would be conventional. Traditional. Same thing here. Mores is pronounced mores. This word is tricky because it does not have singular. Mores does not have singular. Mores are the norms, the customs, the values, the traditions, the conventions of a given culture. And what do youngsters do? They go against them because they want to have a counterculture. Counterculture. Let's carry on. We need the room. How about how about counter clockwise? Counterclockwise. You might decide to go clockwise. I might decide to walk counterclockwise. You're both walking in circle. You decide to go clockwise. I want to go counterclockwise. Counterclockwise is the term the Americans use 
In the British English, we don't say counterclockwise, as you as you as you as you know, as you as you well know. In British English, it is we we prefer the term anticlockwise. Anticlockwise is not something an American would understand. In the U.S., they say counterclockwise, opposite to clockwise, anticlockwise. Let's keep on. Let's let's learn some more example. How about this? Let's more, let's learn some more example. How about how about a counter offer? Counter offer. If somebody if somebody has a property for sale, if somebody has a house for sale, typically in the, in the transaction of real estate, if there is a property for sale, they have their asking price. They may be asking for ten dollars, and you make an offer of seven dollars. The seller either rejects your offer outright, says no, that's too low, I don't want to deal with you, or in most cases, the seller would make a counter offer. So he, he had listed it for ten dollars, you offered seven, the seller said, well, I'll take nine. And you say, all right, how about 850? And they agree to it. You understand? But that offer that is made in response to your offer is called a counter offer. It's one word again, it's one word, counter offer. How about counter plot? Counter plot. If somebody's plotting something and you know it, then you might want to do something. To, and that is called counter plot to preempt. Counterpoint. Counterpoint. If somebody makes a point and you make a point against it, that's called counterpoint. How about counter proposal? Counter proposal. If somebody proposes something, you might say, well, we can't really do what you're proposing, but how about that? How about this? We can't we can spend we can spend ten dollars on this project, but how about uh, nine fifty? That's my counter proposal. Your proposal to do this, we can't do that, but I'll compromise. Here's my counter proposal. Here's my counter proposal, just like counter offer. Finally, finally, I want to erase this thing, and finally, I want to give you the last one, which is counter. Again, it's one word, okay? Or maybe this is this is hyphenated. I'm not sure. Counterintuitive, counterintuitive. I'm not sure whether or not it is hyphenated. I'm not sure about that part. You check it yourself. Counterintuitive means exactly what it says. Intuitive means you you feel it in your guts. You you have a hunch. You have an inkling. Hunch. Inkling. All of these words we have learned before. You feel something in your gut. Your guts, you feel something, something that is visceral. You feel it, you feel it in your guts. You have a hint, you have a, you have an inkling. That is called intuition. And something that goes against your intuition, something that goes against your intuition, you say it is counterintuitive. It is counterintuitive. It goes against my intuition. When I walked in the shop, the pair of shoes, pair of shoes that I picked up, the pair of shoes that I liked the most. The pair of shoes that I felt was of the highest quality, they were selling that as the lowest price. It's quite counterintuitive how they price their item. It is quite counterintuitive how this particular store prices its item. Do you understand? Bye now.